Right, in the event that you all are out there, it's almost five o'clock, so we are going to wait just a few more minutes before we actually get started. Hello, this is Cherie. We're going to wait just a few more minutes before we get started on today's craft to give a couple of other people a chance to join. So there's just a few more people we're going to wait on. Hope you guys are having a good day. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of COVID, but it is what it is, I suppose. So for those of you all tuning in, we're going to wait just one or two more minutes until it is straight up five before we get started. So I wanna say hi to Julianne and Marissa. Hi, you guys. Anybody else that's out there joining today, thanks for coming. All right, it is, look, we got like two more minutes, so we'll wait just another 30 seconds or so. Hi, Marissa again. All right, so you know what? We're just going to go ahead and jump right into it. So hi, my name is Cherie, and I am the teen librarian at the Molly Pruitt branch of the San Antonio Public Library. Quick announcement, the Molly Pruitt branch is a partnership library. We partner with the Northeast Independent School District. So with the recent uptick in COVID cases happening in San Antonio, NEISD has shut down all of its buildings because Pruitt is housed in an NEISD building. We unfortunately are closed. We will be closed until the 13th of July. We will be open on the 14th of July. So if you have books on hold, please um, check and see where they're on hold and you'll be able to pick them up at another branch. If you need to get make it, take it items for the rest of the summer, we will be closed. The Pruitt branch will be closed until the 13th of July again. So please uh, go to mysapple.org to find out more information about the Pruitt closure. All right, so let's get started. So again, I'm Cherie. I am the teen librarian at the Molly Pruitt branch, and today we are going to be making macrame keychains. So a couple of things that you will need to do macrame, you'll probably need some yarn or some twine or some of the rope. If you've got one of our kits, this came in there. Other things that you'll need are some beads. So you'll need some beads. Other things that should have came in your kit if you got one were the actual key rings themselves. So here are the key rings. And things that you probably need to provide are scissors to cut with. And I'm not that accurate, but if you all are really OCD, I'm sorry, uh, precise is probably a better term. You could use a tape measure to measure, but you probably really won't need those things. So if you did receive our macrame um, chain kit, you know that we didn't include any specific directions because there are so many that you can choose from. So if you got one of our kits, there were all of these cool key rings that you could choose from. So we did not provide any specific instructions to just one. So the one that I'm going to do today is going to be the square knot one. And that is this one right here. So I'm going to be doing the square knot key ring today. And so I'm going to show you, I started one a little earlier and it kind of looks like this when you get done with it. So we're going to go ahead and start. So what you wanna do is you're going to grab two of your cords if you're making this one, and they're about 50 inches or so, give or take. So you're gonna need two of these. So you're gonna put one of them on, and then you're gonna take your other one. And the way that you put it on is you will loop it through here like that. Then you're going to Grab these two, pull, and then I'm gonna make like a hitch knot like that. And so you kind of want to do it so that you have two pieces in the middle and then you have some longer pieces. And I'm going to lay this down in a few minutes just so that you can see how that turned out. So you've got your two pieces of cord hooked on to your key ring. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to lay it down. 
so that you can see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to start. So basically, what you wanna do is take your longer pieces, your outside pieces. I do this because they get tangled up and you get twisted and the next thing you know, you've got a mess on your hands, so that's never fun. So you want your two pieces, your two shorter pieces in the middle, next to each other, like that. And then we can start. So what you wanna do, I'm going to start on the left and you're going to take your left piece and you're going to put it over the two pieces in the middle and then you're going to put it underneath that outside piece like this and so this is what it looks like so you've got your left piece going over the two pieces in the middle and then you've got it going under this piece right here All right so that's what it looks like so far then you're going to take this piece right here and you're going to bring it under the two pieces in the middle and up and through this loop. And then when you do that, you're going to get something that looks like a little half knot and then you're just going to pull it And then that's your first half knot. Okay, so I'm going to do a couple of more of those. So we started on the left side. So this time we're going to start on the right side. So again, what you want to do, you want to take that longer thread, you're going to put it over the two pieces in the middle, then you're going to put it under that far thread so we started on the right this time, so it went over these, then it went under these. Then you're gonna take this piece right here that's over, you're going to take it under the two in the middle, and you're going to bring it up through this loop right here. So it's basically just gonna go up through this loop right here. And I don't know if you all remember when we did the paracord brace a little while back, but this is pretty much the same knot that we did on the paracord bracelet. I don't know what it is about me and this knot, but I don't know, I just seemed to like it. So that was the right side, all right? Then we're going to pull it, okay? So then we're going to go back to the left side. So we're going to put it over the two that are in the middle. It kind of looks like a crazy number four, then we're going to put it under the one on the end, so it went over the two in the middle, then it went under this one. And I'm going to do it really slowly just so that y'all can see this. And so then after you got it under, we just took this one right here, and then we took it under the two as well in the middle, and then up through the loop. And then you can kind of see that knot. And then we just kind of pulled it. So that was the left side again. Right? And if you look, you can kind of see where it's building that chain of knots. So I'm going to lay it back down again so that you can continue to see what's going on there. So we're alternating sides. So the last side we did was the left side. So now we're going to do the right side again. So we're going to take it over the two in the center and then we're going to take it under this one. So we've got over and we've got under. Then we're going to take this one, this under one and we're going to take it underneath here, then up through the loop. Like that, 
I'm going to straighten these back out again so that you all can see them. Then we're going to pull it. And so there really is no specific amount of times that you have to do this. I'm probably going to do maybe just two more so that you all don't get bored watching me do this. So I'll just do two more. So we're going to start on the left side. And I'm just going to straighten these out because I believe it's easier for you all to see it when they're straightened out. So we go over the two in the center. Then we go under this one over here, making that kind of crazy backward number four. So it looks like this. So we went over and under. So the one that we just went under, which is this one right here, we're also going to take it under the two in the center and then back up through this loop. Okay, so I said I was going to make two more. So that's one. And then this will be the last one that I do. So we're gonna take the right side over the two pieces in the center. Then there's this one. Then we're going to go under it. Okay, so we've got that over under thing going on. And then we're going to take this long piece under both in the center. Then we're going to bring it up through this loop. And then we're going to pull it. All right, so when you get, and again, this part is totally up to you how long you want to make it. So when you get to about here, if you choose to, you're going to grab one of your beads and you're going to thread your beads. You're going to thread your cord through your beads. So I already did one earlier, just so that you can see. So I'm going to swap this one out. Oh, the magic of live Instagram. So I had already pretty much threaded one through already. So here's one where I did about the same thing that you all just saw. Right? And then as you can see, I decided to take a bead and I threaded the cords through. So I'm going to lay that one down. And then it's basically the same thing all the way down. So you've got your two in the middle like you had before. And then you've got your two long pieces on the outside. And then you want to kind of cradle your bead a little bit. So you're basically just going to start, and I'm going to start on the left side because I get confused easily. And then you just to go, like you did before, over the two in the middle. And then you're going to go under this guy right here. All right, you guys got that? So over, then under. Then you're going to take this guy that you just went under and you're going to pull it up through that loop. And then you want to pull it, but you want to kind of cradle your bead with that. All right, so that's what it looks like. You kind of want to cradle your bead with that. All right, so I'm going to lay it back down so that you all can see. So I started with the left side. All right. So then we're going to go to the right. And again, we're going to go over. Then we're going to go under this guy. Then the one that we just went under we're going to take it under the two in the middle and then we're going to bring it up through this loop. So it's going to come up and through this loop. Then we're going to pull it. All right, so that was the right side. And then you can see that it's making a really nice cradle for your bead. So I'm going to do just a couple of more of these so that you don't get bored watching me do this. I 
hope that you're enjoying it. I don't know. I went kind of crazy and started making a bunch of these just because I too am staying in the house since my branch is closed. By the way, if there are any teens out there who normally come to Pruitt, Pruitt teens, and then all of the other 210 teen library teens, I'm glad that you all are here, like I said. So we're going to go over and we're going to go under. Oops, you know what, you guys? I said under and didn't do it. All right, there we go. See? So we went over and under. Then we're going to take this guy. And pull. All right, so now we're back on the right side. So we're going to go over the two in the center, and then we're going to go under this guy. Okay. And then we're going to come up in the center. And then we're going to pull. So this right here, you can go as long as you want to go. You can make it as long or as short as you want. I think I'm going to do just a couple of more just because I can. And it's like that. And that's the way it is. So I'm going to do just a couple of more. So again, we're going to go over the two in the center and then under the one that's right here. So we went over and then we went under. Then we take this guy and we go under the two in the center and then up through the loop that we just made. And then you just kind of keep doing it. So I'm going to do two more of these because again, I don't want you all to get totally bored with this because if you're not making this one then I can see where it might be a little like will she please stop so I'm going to do two more and then I will stop so over and then under and then up through the center like we did before and then pull so that's one of the two more that I said I was going to do Right. And then for my last trick, no, for my last knot, because I said I'd only do two more, we're going to go over the two in the center. Then we're going to go under this guy right here. Okay. And then we're going to come up through that loop. So that's the last one of those I think I'm going to do. So to get the tassel on this one, what you can do once you get to the bottom, so there's my key ring so far, and that's long enough for me. So when you get to the end, what you want to do is take it, and you can just take the whole thing, just wrap it around your two fingers like that. See, I'm just wrapping it around, nothing fancy. Then I'm sticking my, so it's just, so that I make a loop. And then I'm basically just tying a knot with the whole thing. Then I'm pulling the knot like that. So there's my knot. And then I don't want my tassels to be all crazy and raggedy looking. So what I'm going to do just because I'm actually going to walk around with this, so. And if you guys make this, take a picture of it and put it on our Instagram. So yeah, that'd be cool, we'd love to see it. Other things that I did not do that you all can do is I didn't paint any of my beads. So if you have markers or paint or anything like that, you can feel free to color your beads and just kind of, you know, zhuzh it up a little bit and do you, boo. Um, also with your yarn, I've seen people tie-dye them or color them or whatever they want to do. 
I was just kind of in the moment and needed a bunch of stuff to do today. So anyway, back to the tassel. Like I said, I don't want mine looking all raggedy and funky looking, so I don't want it all uneven. So I'm just going to take my scissors, cut it off a little bit. So that's enough tassel for me. And that's basically it. That's the um, square knot one. I did start, and I'm not going to actually do it today, but I'll show you some of the other ones. Cause like I was saying, I have been in the house just like you all have been in the house. So I've needed something to do. One of my coworkers actually made this one. So shout out to Miss Kiko. She's amazing. So she made this one. And then I was going to make one like this because they're relatively easy to make. So I'll show you how I began it. Basically, you just need a piece of yarn or string or twine or whatever you all want to use. On this one, I decided to use yarn. So you just take one of your threads, you put it on like we put on the other one, so that's the same basic slip knot. Then I threaded my beads through there, so that's kind of how I did that. So I'm going to lay that out and open it up. Then, I had already started this, you take about 20 pieces of yarn-ish and make them about half as long as how you want your actual tassel to be. So you do that. Okay. Then basically what you're going to do is put it in here, about halfway through. And then you're just going to tie it in about halfway through. So you're just going to tie a knot so that's part of your knot. Okay, then to make it stay, you're going to do another one. So now that you've got your knot, you kind of want to smooth that out a little bit. We'll fix this up later. Remember I said I don't like raggedy ends, but we're not quite ready to handle that yet. So you can fold it in half. And then I'm going to take another color just because I get confused easy, y'all. I'm not even going to lie to you, I do. So I need to be able to see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna take this black one. So what you do with this is you basically just kind of make a little hook. So you're gonna take this where you want your, this part, I guess you call it the neck, I'm not really sure, but where you ever you want this part to be. So you're gonna take your other color yarn or whatever you're doing and you're going to take the ball in your hand and put it under all of your tassels, booyah, kind of like that. And you wanna leave a little loop there. And then you wanna take it, and I don't know if y'all can see this, let me get in there so y'all can see that. Okay, so I'm gonna just slow that down. So I took it under, and then I left, I left a little loop here first. That's why I'm doing it in two different colors so that y'all can see it too. And then I just kind of took it over, right? And so then, after you do all that, you just kind of, wherever you want this to start, you just wrap it around. So you're going to just start wrapping. So I'm just basically wrapping it around, making that little throat looking thing that you all saw. So I'm just going to wrap it around and then you want to start working your way down toward the end of your tassel. So you kind of want to do it a little tightly so you're just going to go around your tassel. Working your way down. And 
make sure you don't get your stuff tangled up like mine is getting tangled up. Be better than me, guys. Be better than me. All right, so as you can see, I'm starting to get like the throat part of my tassel going on here. So then when you do that, you make it as long as you want it to be. Then you just kind of start working your way back up. So we're gonna go a couple more times just so that we get completely back up. So then when you do get completely back up, what you're going to do, once you're completely back up, is you're going to cut this off. And then that little loop that you made at the top, you're going to stick that through, that little loop that y'all made at the top, you're going to stick that through that loop. Then you're just going to pull it then that other little piece, you're going to pull that too so that the whole thing tightens up. So you want to pull that pretty tight. And then I don't know if y'all can see that. So we want to just pull everything. We want to also, so this guy's not all crazy looking, straighten that out a little bit. So we're back to this part. I'm going to pull it and keep pulling it till the loop completely disappears. Now, if you're comfortable, what you can do, and I don't trust my knot making ability, so I am going to do this, I'm going to just tie another knot here. And then whatever edges that you have, you can cut those off now. So that's the one. And then I'm going to cut off the other one. All right, so here's the second one. So those long pieces that I told you not to worry about, good thing I held this up so that you all could see it, so that somebody could remind me, girl, cut that thing off of there. Yes, ma'am. All right, so here we're going to do, I'm just going to cut this off, these raggedy edges. All right, so that's this one. This is the tassel one. And again, you can put as many or as few beads on here as you'd like. And then this is the square knot one. So that is pretty much it for the macrame keychain experience. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm going to, because I have my Imagine shirt on, do a little sample propaganda right now. So if you are participating in summer reading, imagine, woohoo, imagine all the fun that you can have. If you participate in eight activities or Instagram live experiences or read a combination of books and participating in experience, you will accumulate credit towards your free t-shirt that you can pick up at any branch except for Pruitt right now because we're closed. Hope to see you after the 14th though. So there's some cool things going on. Um, this week, like we did the macrame keychain. So the week of the 7th through the 11th, we're going to be doing animal magnets. So again, go to mysapple.org to figure out or have somebody help you with that. We also have some activities on Discord. I'm shameless with the propaganda, y'all, but you know what? This is what we do and we love having you and we love that you're participating in our activities. So we've got some things on Discord for you to participate in. And then of course, there are our Instagram events. So please feel free to check out any of our at 210 library events. So thank you all so much for coming and I'm looking at all the waves out there. Thank you. Have the best fourth ever y'all. So please feel free to go to mysapple.org, hit us up on Instagram, go to our Discord activities, read some books, have a great 210 teen library summer. Again, best of luck on the fourth. I hope to see you all again at some point. Have a good one, all right? Bye.